hi good morning good day welcome back to my channel my name is Ata Glorious which please don't mind my face I'm very sad this morning like my name is Ata Glorious which welcome back to my channel and I just came to rant or to express myself so um I know most of you don't really know anything much about me aside the food videos and the vlogs so um that little girl who grew up in the north born and bred in the north kaduna state and it was like kaduna or let me use kaduna it used to be a very beautiful city like kafancham precisely it used to be a very beautiful city like you could go and do your business and just be happy just be excited there are days where we slept outside like during the heat periods bring out our mattresses outside sleep outside you could go for church programs and come back very late at night like 1 a.m life was just beautiful like all this side we are seeing now is not what it used to be i came back to the east sometime 2008 September 2008 that was when I came down to the east for the first school and I couldn't just adjust to the lifestyle of the east because the east was like it was tense like there was always something somewhere like you know okay free, free, free. there was always something somewhere that you are not okay with to transportation to feeding everything was just too expensive like I couldn't cope it took me time to cope you can imagine taking bike 10 naira then and coming down to the design, I tell him 15 naira. How can you adjust? Like, it wasn't, it wasn't funny. Like, I was always looking forward to going home. Going, going home, I mean, like going back to the north. You had people who were doing things genuinely out of their heart. Like, I still have my friends. In fact, one of my friends got married last Saturday, Jovinta. We still communicate like nothing is ever wrong like there is nothing to fight for but it's not like that in the east then all this crisis started i was still in the east when this crisis started there are days when we are still younger maybe somebody beat somebody they start fighting and we'll pack up and all that after a while the tension goes down but that of from 2011 it became even during the sharia when the sharia crisis happened I was still very little, but I can picture a lot of things that happened. I could I could remember finding ourselves in Abuja that night. I, my little brother, my parents. I was still very small. We were just two of us then. It's not like I can just picture that night. They said there was Sharia crisis and we run into Abuja or something like that. Then 2011, I was still in school during the Easter break. Or the Easter season, and after the Easter season, because we usually celebrate Easter in school, my school, we leave the school on Easter Mondays. So on the Monday we left school, came back, I met my parents. That's what happened. Long story short, our houses got burnt. So after them, um, good luck was declared president or something. Our houses got burnt. Our shops, because our shop and our house was together, so everything got burnt. Came back to the east with nothing, like everything just like that and i used to be this proud that this girl like i don't need anything from anybody my dad my father can provide anything i want you know and having to see him in that state he couldn't just go like i could remember one of the occasions my mom was saying eh, that thank god na kwa. Eh, thank god that we came back that um that place is not a place to stay, something like that. That thank God that we came back with our lives and all that, and we're not going back again. I remember my father saying, Do you think if they did not burn our house, that we would have come back? The life there was so, it was so easy to go by. After this crisis, like, I don't even know how it got this bad. Like, man. So, two days ago, or last week, we heard about the Kano crisis, or the Sokoto crisis. Then it came down to Kano. Then it came down to Abuja two days ago. There was this man that was living with us 
but I was living on the street. He did most of the bagging of persons living around us then. We call him Baba. He's from my village. So I saw his son made a post. His eldest child made a post yesterday night when I was over going to bed. So I saw his son made a post of um, his cousin who is staying in Abuja or who stays in Abuja with her husband. She was in labor that evening that crisis started in Abuja. And today, our director seminar, our film director seminar is starting today in Abuja. And when I saw that news going about, I had to start checking up on some of my team members, my team leaders who are already in Abuja. So tell them this is what is happening and they should be careful of where they are going to. Because normally we usually go like this before so that we're able to meet with team members who are in the location or probably host an event before the main event. So, only for me to see that post yesterday that his cousin, who was in Lebo that evening when that thing was happening, and couldn't go to the hospital. The husband couldn't drive her to the hospital because the environment was not even safe. And she had a prolonged Lebo and finally died alongside the baby. I had a prolonged Lebo during my last delivery and I could imagine the pain somebody had to go through to die. I can imagine the pain I had to go through for those four days from Friday up until Monday and for somebody to go through that and not make it alive and still lost the baby alongside is nothing anybody should experience. I used to believe in Nigeria, but I don't think I still believe in Nigeria. Every day you have reasons to, you just have nightmares. Like, the first day, I remember telling my husband the message and telling him that I cannot sleep. I don't know why I cannot sleep. But with all these happenings, I don't know, I don't know how people, tr like, huh. you can imagine you going through a pain when you're not even the one who is directly affected. How much more the family that is affected just imagine this young man looking at his wife suffer to death like how how as the day goes by the day is going by the problems are just increasing instead of decreasing instead of us finding a solution there is no solution like where are we going to from here I said we should pray we have prayed we keep praying I don't know what to say, but you know, like when you see things that you don't even know where to start comforting the person from. I could not even say anything on that post. I could not even, like, how? How? I will say, the source of the face for the party. And we just think it will just be away. It's almost like a season such as this, like close to this or around this time, I would have to mourn even people I don't know. I could remember, you know, it used to be beautiful. I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. And it's not like the East is even safe now. So where are we going to stay? Are we going to hang up? Where are we going to stay? What joy do we derive in seeing people suffer? What excitement do you get from even killing people in life that you cannot give? You could imagine uh, you see somebody one minute and the next minute you are hearing you are just hearing stories that you cannot even relate. You cannot even sit down to like assume or imagine okay how did this thing happen? Say God will help us. We believe in God and He will help us. He cannot give us what we cannot carry. That is what He made us to understand. And I believe that this too shall pass. And 
my prayer is every family who is going through one of the challenges may God be your crown may God be your crown may God give you all the peace that you desire that's all I can say thank you for staying tuned to this time and please do like, comment and subscribe I just think I have to be bringing up stories I don't know if I should do it like a series stories of what Kaduna South used to be like God will help each and every one of us to strive and soar through this challenging thing Jesus name